A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. I finally got the new versions of Lotka Volterra here and it looks absolutely fabulous. You can find those over on Stemmerge. They look pretty good. I love face space diagrams. They are just so superb. So you probably know about this meme that, um, okay, um, you probably know about this meme. Okay, so here this is something that someone commented and actually I never thought anything about that, okay? I just thought, okay, it's a nice little coincidence. There are probably not too many numbers satisfying this relationship, but there actually are quite a lot of numbers who satisfy this relationship. And we are going to find out today how you can actually generate weird uh, constellations of this form right here for yourself. And for this, we are at first going to take a look at Python, which is going to give us a few hints on how to approach this problem. So what I got here on the left hand side is a small Python script that I wrote and it's basically just doing what you want to take a look at. We are going to take two numbers which you can input, number n and number m, and the order of n and m is actually really important. I'm going to explain this very soon in the video. So fingers, what we are going to do is we are just going to go through all the numbers up until some upper bound n, okay, and all the numbers up until some upper bound m. And we are going to take a look at all the combinations n plus m plus n times m, which fulfill the um, condition that we have the concatenation of n and m together, which I'm going to just put as a certain string being added together, going to convert this into an integer type and then we are going to take a look at, an, at a simple if statement. And if we were to run this program, we are going to take a look at which pairs of numbers actually work out and then concatenate it, give us this very nice expression that we saw at the beginning. Let's say that we are going to set n equal to, I don't know, 10 for now, and also m equal to 10. Let's take a look at all the possible combinations that we get. And also I'm leaving out the number zero as n because um, for, for example, n being equal to zero and m being equal to three doesn't make any real sense concatenated as being a, a number zero three. Okay, for, for Python it actually does make sense, but for our um, base 10 number system, it really doesn't. And what you're going to notice is that all the pairs n and m consist of 1 and 9, 2 and 9, 3 and 9, 4 and 9, etc. So m is always 9, but for n it can be each and every number um, from 1 to 10 overall. Now what about, um, yeah, le let's run it again, let's go up until 10 again and why not say 100 as our m this time? Oh, so once again n can be every number from 1 to 10, but our m is restricted to being concatenations of 9s, 9 and 99, etc. Now you could basically think that this is going to happen all the time. So what about going from um, n from 1 to 5 up until let's say 10,000? And as we would expect from our um, observation before, we are always going to get m as being concatenations of 9. And this is true in general and you can pretty easily prove this using just simple um, digit decomposition of your n and m. But in today's video we are just going to take a look at a concrete e example where our n is just a one digit number and our m is going to be a two digit number. And we are going to show now okay, in the rest of the video, that our m is always going to be a concatenation of nines, meaning a 99 in our case. Now, you saw what happened in Python, which is quite interesting in and of itself. So apart from the numbers that start with a zero, etc., okay, as our n, there seem to be infinitely many number pairs who seem to satisfy this nice relationship. And they are all of the form n plus some kind of concatenations of nines and then plus those multiplied together ending up with the concatenation of those original numbers n and m. And I would like to give you an idea how you could prove this relationship um, using a little example, okay? And generalizing this is very easy using just digit decomposition in some notation. And I hope you are going to enjoy what you are going to see today. So um, at first 
what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at a concrete example. Let's say we want to take a look at the example 6 plus um, 99 plus 6 times 99 is going to turn into and by our thing that we want to take a look at today. This is going to turn into the concatenation of our number n and our number m 699. And we would like to decompose this into its digit decomposition respectively. Okay, this is just one of many many examples and you can generalize this using numbers with n digits plus another number with m digits and then you are going to see that you are always going to end up with a concatenation of nines here as being the second number. Also one thing that I want you guys to notice is that concatenations do not commute. Okay, um, the, the concatenation of a b is not the same as the concatenation of BA obviously because 699 is not equal to 996. So this is not something that is going to happen. So we always have to have the concatenations of 9 um, on the back. Okay, this has to be the second number, just as a little side note. So at first let us write out what a digit decomposition of a one digit number actually is. Let's say it consists of one digit, okay? We are going to call it D naught. The not right here is rather important as the index because this right here is going to be multiplied with, okay, 6 is nothing but 6 times 1 and 1 is nothing but in base 10, 10 to the 0 of power. So d not times 10 to the 0 of power. Okay, now let us take a look at a number, okay, for, for example 99. We don't know yet that it's going to consist only uh, um, of concatenations of 9 um, as its digit decomposition. We're going to give the digits a new name. We want to have those digits being two different digits for now. We don't know what those numbers are going to be exactly. So we are going to state that the second number m is going to consist of some digit d1, okay, multiply it with 10 to the first power obviously because this right here 99 is nothing but 9 times 10 to the first power so 90 plus 9 times 10 to the zero of power meaning the second digit is going to be overall d naught times 10 to the zero of power okay this right here is our number m and this right here is our number n now what about the multiplication of those well we are just going to write it out because we know what our numbers are actually so we have that this is d naught times 10 to the north power multiply it with and then we are going to get d1 times 10 to the first power plus d0 times 10 to the zero of power. And all of this is going to be equal to the concatenation of those two numbers. Let us take a look at 699 as an example. How does the concatenation actually look? What does it consist of? I mean 699 in base 10 is nothing but 600 plus and then we got 90 and then we got plus 9. Now those are all um, digits multiplied with powers of 10 obviously. And this is just something which is going to hold overall. If you have um, three digits overall, you are going to end up with um, 10 to the squared something, okay? 10 to the second power in, in some way. If you concatenate five digits, you are going to get some factor of 10 to the fourth power at the front. Meaning this right here is nothing but six times 10 squared plus nine times 10 to the first power plus nine times 10 to the zero of power. And it's going to look like this. And those digits are actually something that we know of because this right here is just going to be our small d naught. This right here is d1 and this is big d naught, <laughs> the big d. So this right here is going to be actually nothing other than, okay, we got d naught times 10 squared, okay, just by the same argumentation here. And now here is where the fun actually begins and cancelling out. Be because what we are going to do is we are going to recover our other digit m right here once again. So this is d1 times 10 to the first power plus d0 times 10 to the zero of power. And we can cancel those out on both sides. That's not a problem. They are just um, yeah, going to be cancelled out on both sides. And what we are going to be left with is so this right here is equivalent to saying that d0 times 10 squared is hence nothing other than, okay, we got d0 times 10 to the zero of power. And then we can multiply this out plus d0 times capital D1, 10 to the and first power overall. And then we are going to add to it d0 times the other d0 times, okay, we got 10 to the zero of power overall. 
Okay, so we got this and this is basically how the proof is going to work also in higher dimensions if you have an n-digit number at the front and an m-digit number at the back. Okay, you are just going to get a few more um, factors out on the other side. So this right here is going to be the part that is going to become a bit more complicated, but it's not too hard to prove. Try it out for yourself, maybe post a comment down there. That's going to be an ugly comment <laughs> when you think about all the sums and, and the like. Yeah, but overall, good thing is, we can compare coefficients here. Basically what we have is just a polynomial in D0 because we can factor out a D0 right here. So on the one hand we have that D0 times 10 squared is on the other hand nothing other than we got D0 on all of those and if we factor out D0 here we are just going to get 1 okay so 1 plus okay other than that we are going to get D1 times 10 to the first power and last but not least we are going to get D0 times 10 to the zero of power. And yeah, like mentioned before, this right here is basically simply a polynomial in our D0. Meaning what we can do is we can compare coefficients. We got 10 squared times D0 is nothing other than something times D0. Meaning this something obviously needs to be 10 squared. And now we can just start manipulating this a tiny little bit. For example, this right here is now an equivalence relation. Meaning what we can do is we can say, okay, let's subtract one on both sides. Meaning what we're going to get is just this part being equal to 10 squared minus 1. 10 squared minus 1, 100 minus 1 is 99. This is good. This is pretty good, okay? And this right here is going to be the, the, the crucial part basically of the observation that you are going to get a concatenation of 9 out all the time as being the second number if you want this relationship to hold. Namely, we're going to get that 99 is hence nothing other than we're going to get d1 times 10 to the first power plus d0 times 10 to the zero of power. But what is the right hand side exactly? This right here is just the digit decomposition of a certain number, okay? This right here is overall just the concatenation of our digits d1 and d0. And now we can just compare digits in base 10. Namely, d1 must be equal to nine. And we also know that d0 must also be equal to nine. And hence, you got it. Like mentioned before, you can just translate this into higher dimensions. You are going to get a few sums out, which are going to turn out a tiny little bit ugly overall. But this is how the proof is, is going to work in higher dimensions too. If you couldn't follow everything, just try what we did here with the concrete numbers up here. It's, it's not too hard. You see, we got 699 here, which is nothing but 600 plus 99, meaning the 99s are going to cancel out on both sides. Then you multiply this out as a digit decomposition, factor out your six, for example, or it's going to be even easier because this right here is just going to be 1 plus 99 being hence nothing other than 100 if you compare coefficients here and yeah then you got it just try it out for yourself and try to go through the proof but i think this right here is a really cool relationship and i would like to thank the person who commented because i never thought much of it but i'm um, actually looking into it a bit further actually um yeah re released a lot of cool insights to me overall and if you did enjoy what you saw today, then you might probably also enjoy today's sponsor Brilliant who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. So how should I explain Brilliant to you? What do our sponsors do? Well, Brilliant is an online learning platform and app which is absolutely freaking cool. Trust me, they provide you with the best STEM related content out there on the internet, at least in my opinion. And I for myself can get enough of their website because their course concept is just very sneaky and nice and I absolutely love it. And also all the animations there and the interactive content in, in, in general is just absolute first class content. And I personally think that if you didn't understand, for example, what we did here today, then you should go over to Brilliant and try out a few of their number theory and contest um, mathematics courses and then you are going to be well prepared for all of this digit stuff that we did here today. Apart from their crazy good course concept, what you can find over there is also a huge community of STEM interested people. Be it in mathematics, physics, science, computer sciences, chemistry, general relativity, never mind. You can find a lot of wiki entries over there and also community created um, exercises overall. And the best thing about the exercises is that you can try to find the answer obviously for yourself, but if you 
weren't able to find the answer, you can just look at all the comments down there and they are going to provide you with high class answers to all your problems, which is pretty good if you ask me. And if you want to get a first glimpse of their website, definitely make sure to check out some of my live streams that I did in the past. There I cover a lot of courses. Um, I think I already covered geometry courses, probability courses, um, multivariable calculus, etc. So definitely check those out to see um, how Brilliant um, actually works, how all of the courses um, will actually help you get a new insights into your STEM career, for example. And if you really want to try it out for yourself after watching live streams, for example, or maybe I piqued your interest with the um, topic today, then make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it, you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already. And the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a extremely great deal if you ask me. So much content over there, more content than I could ever deliver with my channel. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, recommend channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more by the stuff I create over on my personal Teespring shop or the stuff that I have hanging around here, apart from this, over on STEM merch. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. That's basically it. See ya. <laughs>